At 7.30, we got our second of two 7.30 games. We got number five, Washington, who's 8-0. Trevor, number 20, USC, who's 7-2. Washington favored by three points on ABC. Michael Penix Jr. has been, you got to think, the Heisman favorite. But after these past couple weeks, he could have lost him a little bit of steam. He's gone 2-3 of 294, throwing for 2,945 yards, 24 touchdowns to six interceptions. Dylan Johnson on the ground has had 87 carries for 430 yards and six touchdowns. Again, not gaudy stats on the ground as Washington. That is by far their biggest weakness as a team. Roe Madunes has had 51 catches for 907 yards and seven touchdowns. Caleb Williams for the Trojans got 189 to 277. Thrown for 2,646 yards, 25 touchdowns to four interceptions. Marshawn Lloyd on the ground has had 99 carries for 766 yards and eight touchdowns. And Taj Washington had 35 catches for 711 yards and five touchdowns. Uh, USC is 51-30 and 30 against Washington all the time. The last game went to Washington in 2019. These two coaches have never coached against each other. Uh, and, you know, Caleb, Lincoln Riley in, in uh, DeBoer's tenure, they've never gone toe-to-toe -to -toe against each other. So I think this is going to be a really interesting football game. Again, Washington has a tough stretch, right? In their next three of their next four, they play, obviously, USC this week. They play Utah, I think, next week. And I think they play Oregon State at some point in there, too. Again, those are three very good football teams in all places where you could slip up if you're Washington, especially on the road against a scary USC team. USC's defense is awful. It is just the worst thing you'll ever watch. If you want to watch some really bad defense, turn on a USC game because you will watch 50 points easy from the other team go up. And if you're playing bad defense, it's going to be exasperated. Uh, by the fact that Washington has one of the best offenses in the entire country and one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country in Michael Penix Jr. But on the other side of things, if you're not looking to be a consistent contender, having one of, if not the best quarterback in all of college football at the helm, it does make you a trendy upset pick. Caleb Williams is insanely great. Um, and while the USC's playoff hopes might be over, their Pac-12 championship hopes are still very much alive. And you have a chance to knock out one of your biggest contenders right here in Washington. Again, Washington's the only undefeated team left in the Pac-12. If you win this game, if you're USC, you are suddenly right in the driver's seat to go to a Pac-12 championship along with Washington and Oregon. And weirdly enough, not something you want if you're Oregon, right? Um, you just still have to play USC so you have your own destiny in your hands, but you would like Washington to be as formidable as a foe, at least it looks like on paper when you play them again in the Pac-12 championship. You'd love for them to be undefeated and as highly ranked as possible. Um, so weirdly enough, if you're an Oregon fan, kind of rooting for USC in this matchup, but everyone else who's not a Washington or Oregon fan would like to see USC pull off this upset. It'd be at least a little bit funny. Um... USC has the offense to do it. I legitimately believe they can. Um, it's, it's the best quarterback v. quarterback matchup of the entire day. Pen Michael Penix Jr. versus Caleb Williams are two possible first-round quarterbacks. This is a great quarterback v. quarterback matchup. Um, and when I go quarterback v. quarterback, I go, don't go best team. You go best quarterback. And Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in all of college football. I like the USC to pull off the upset at home.